In this week of Entrepreneur Life, you'll find out how I make labels at home. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know whenever I release a new video. Okay, so first you're going to sign up for a free account with Canva on canva.com. You can use your Gmail if you have a Gmail login to sign up, or you can just sign up for a free account. Once you have that, you're going to look at the size of your labels. Now, if you've gotten sticker labels from Amazon, you're probably going to have an 8x5 and 11 inch as dimensions. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to create a design and you're going to have custom dimensions. And let's say we want it to be 8.5 and oh, make sure you change it to inches if you're going by inches. So let's say 8.5 by 11. Now you create your design. Now that you're there, keep in mind what percentage you have it on. So this would be at 100% and you can see that this is roughly an estimate of how this 8.5 by 11 paper looks. You'll also have that reference to the size of your bottle label. Now what I did when I first first started making these labels, I would put the bottle up to the actual screen and double check that my bottle matched the exact size of, or an estimate of the exact size of the screen. Then from there, I would always go back and forth to see. But an easier way is that you can use some measuring tape and if you use the measuring tape you'll also be able to have a rough estimate and go back and forth um, to the screen. Now there's tons of different ways to do this. There's no one right way but these are just suggestions. You'll find your own hopefully as you continue on. Now what I like to do there is I start off with my label um, and if it's an image, then you would go to uploads and you would upload one of your images. And if it's just a uh, text, you would probably go to, let's say this one, and you would then start to edit your text. So if you had some type of brand, maybe you sell the most amazing um, oils, let's say that. If that was your company name and you had a logo and you had a specific font uh, and this was your, let's go for something a little different. So this was your font and this was what you wanted to be presented on the logo. Maybe you also had another specific thing where you had uh, an image to go along with the logo, whatever that is, you could then put it together and that will be the reference for your logo name. And then we would put it, move it up to the top. So like move it to the top left corner where your page, your sticker label would begin. And let's say this is your logo, of course, Hopefully you already have your logo and you would be uploading it. But if not, you can even create a faux logo right from Canva. They also have uh, specific templates that you can look at. So for example, if you want a logo maker, um, you could easily go, they have different logos, so you can go to whichever logo you're looking for. Um, Let's type in beauty, see what comes up. Okay, so let's say that this would be a logo that you wanted. So, so you can replace the current page with this. And now you can see that the color is black. You can change it to white. You can also change the different colors to whatever you would like it to be. So let's say if we just leave it like this, let's forget amazing oils um, we can leave it here and then so let's move it up to the top 
left like we did with Amazing Oils. And uh, sometimes this gets tricky, but you can just play around with it, move it down a bit. Uh, looks a little thick, but you can change it. So this would be where you're changing, you're making it a little bit bigger so that you can see exactly where everything is supposed to line up with the with the edits so okay so we wanted it a little bit thinner we move it in make it thinner and then we use this icon to drag the entire thing and of course uh, let's say these are oil so maybe it's meant oil don't know if that's an actual company name but let's say that's what it was and um, we can move this fashion if we wanted to take it out we could take it out and so here is the logo that you have now. Okay, so now that I want this, I'll probably go back to 100 and see if this is the right size. I would probably go back to my bottle reference and see if this is exactly how I want it to look. Um, and then I would just edit accordingly from, from there, right? So then after that, we're going to also want to add a couple of a little bit of text. For the sake of this, I'm actually going to just delete that so that it can be a little bit simpler. Um, and so here is the the text we're going for. And after that, we're going to then move into what needs to be on your label. So let's say you're doing a skincare product. You're probably going to have something in a form of directions, how to use it, and ingredients. So what I do is I go to text, and um, for text, I would pick maybe a subheading, and there I would label it, let's say, if these are directions, I would use, I would label directions, and then I'd put this, uh, let's give it to the left. So if I wanted the directions to be on the left, I would resize it and place it to the left of my logo and my brand name. And then I would, you can do that, and then you can also just make it much smaller. This seems like something you would do. So let's say you can Use to uh, moisturize skin and hair. Okay, so let's say these are directions, and you have you can have a lot more directions. Um, this will be where you would place it, and you can just continue to write a bit more, like add to drops to your shower or bath, right? Uh, you would leave that there and this would be your directions. And let's say you maybe wanna make this bold, make it all bold, up to you. Now you can copy and paste this and you can drag it down to where the bottom of the bottle would be and then maybe you wanna put caution so like uh, maybe caution, do not, oops, so we're starting over here, do not ingest, keep, let's say, keep out of reach of children. Let's put that. That's a typical one. And again, whatever you're selling, make sure you study exactly what you need to personally put on the labels and develop your system from there. From there, another common one, so maybe get a little body one, and you want to place your size right below where your label is in the center. Maybe it's a one ounce, let's say it's one ounce, and one fluid ounce, 
and then then maybe you'll put this you might want to change the size it's generally a bit smaller you can place it down there again going back to your bottle seeing if it works out for you and then you're going to move to the left side and so the right side rather and for the right side maybe this is where you're putting your ingredients so let's say it's a hundred percent natural um, so maybe we'll put, let's say it's coconut oil. So we're going to put coconut oil and depending on your product, you want to put what you use the most of percentage wise at the top and then continue to go down from there. So let's say if it was sesame oil, maybe there's an, an essential oil there as well so maybe you want to put that in there and then after that after you're done with the exact ingredients that you have in your in your oil or whatever your product is you then want to complete that you also usually have to put in the address of where it's from. So let's just say it's from Florida. So maybe if it's, you wanna put the name of your company. So let's say it's mint oil and where exactly is it? Let's say it's in Miami, Florida. And then you also, if it's a website, again, I don't know if this is a company, this is just an example, but if you want the website at the bottom, and then I section everything off to the left. This is just a sample company, but for my company, I do the same exact thing. So you place everything to the left, and this is a general, you want to make sure everything is centered. This is a general, you might need to put shelf life over here as well. Um, but other than that, this is an example of what a label would be. And then I would check, I would change the percentage down to like, let's say 50%. Then I would look and I would see if this is the right size. Generally speaking, I would have to make this a bit smaller to fit, let's say, a one fluid ounce bottle or a half an ounce or even for two ounces. This might be a little bit too big. So what I would do is I would copy everything. I would drag it to copy it and I would move it down just to make it a bit smaller. And this would be where I would highlight it again and I would go back to 100 and then see if this meets the requirements. So something I also noticed too was when, depends on what printer you have, um, sometimes it might pick up this or if it's too small, it might not pick it up. So then I would go back and make everything bold. But again, it just depends on the type of printer you have and also the ink and also what your trying to achieve because of course if you had a body butter let's say this would be much bigger but since the size here is about one fluid ounce this would be approximately the size of the label so once you have the size of the label if you don't mind testing it out I first copied this copied and then I pasted it down the sides and I continued that until it was down, all the way down. And then I printed it out just like this to see if it worked out and if it fit the actual label size. And then if it did fit it, I would then continue to do it until the entire sheet is filled with these labels and then after this I sent it to the printer you also want to make sure that 
you're lining them up as well so that when you're cutting these labels that they are lined up perfectly for you to evenly cut each side so that's going to be something you're going to just have to um, notice when you're starting making sure that they're all on the same level okay and so once you're done with that and you've printed it out, you're ready for making them a bit more waterproof. And this is where I add some tape to each line of this. And then I'll add the tape to each line. From there, I'd have my waterproof labels. Then after I have my waterproof labels, I would go and cut them using a paper cutter that I also got from Amazon or you can get from a local office supply store. And there you have it. This is how you can make a label all from Canva. You can also click the link in the description box for my specific company. And thank you for going on this journey with this sample company. And let me know in the comments down below if you're starting a company and have you tried this method of labels or have you found an even better way to make labels at home? I hope you enjoyed this information. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified whenever I release a new video. Until next time, bye-bye.